Um, ready? Yeah. Yep. Well, welcome back home. Well, thanks. It's great to be home, man. It's always fun to come home. It always makes me laugh. We took the elevator up here recently with a backstage pass guy who said he knew you, he grew up with you, he actually showed you a two-bedroom home he was looking at in Bethune at one point. He's going to be in the audience tonight. Got a lot of family and friends coming out? Oh, yeah, that's my friend Lou. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, when he come, you know, Andover's a small town, so, yeah, yeah, it is great to come home. It is. You know, in L.A., everything changes. You know, nothing changes back east. <laughs> my wife... Not only is the school she grew up in not there, the hill it's on is gone. It's been leveled, and it's like it's a witness protection program. It's all different. How you, you can't even find where she grew up because it, the housing developments change every couple of weeks. So when you come home and everything is exactly where it was when right. you left, you know, so it's fun. Where are your go-tos? I mean, what are you looking to do when you come back here? You're doing stand-up tonight, but do you have time to go out and, and take a look at the old neighbor, meet up with friends, perhaps? Well, I'm going to meet some friends tonight and stuff. Not a whole lot of time. I'm in Orono, Maine, tomorrow night. Okay. And then I fly home tomorrow night, and i got to film Sunday morning at 8.30, so yeah. it's a little, uh, little, little crazy schedule. Let's talk about the show here now. Uh, you know, you bet your life. I remember the reruns. You as right, well. Right, right, right. With uh, Groucho Marx, famous right, right. show. I used to love watching it. And uh, I'm just curious to know what you think of it, because... Uh, the first thing that struck me when I watched it was, you know, you had Kevin Eubanks with you. Right, right. And I think as a viewer, there's a comfort level right there, not to yeah. mention well, your Ke career. Kevin's great. We've been friends for a long time. Uh, you know, it, it's really based on the jaywalking thing we used to do. Yeah. We go out and talk to people on the street. But the difference with since this is a game show and money's involved, you cannot have any contact with the people mm -hmm. until you meet them. Mm -hmm. So when people walk out for the first time, I, everything I know about them, I know. I just learned right now because you know, if if you have contact, then they think you might give clues. You know all that kind of stuff. So it really you have to work fast on your feet, and it, it's a lot of fun. I, I really enjoy doing the show. It's great, and and Kevin's terrific. He's perfect foil, you know. And and we we have a good time. We have a good time. It's really a a comedy show with a game element attached. Yeah. And. The questions are so easy. It's like with opening the money, it's like, how stupid are you? Please, please, you know. Uh, I had an old lady come up there. She goes, you know, you say the meanest things in the nicest way to people. I thought, oh, that's right. That's right. I just you like that. The meanest let things them down easy. in the nicest way. Yeah, that's what made me laugh. You know, there were a couple of uh, contestants I actually saw some of the shows that stood out. One, a guy was a dead ringer for Abe Lincoln. Yeah, the Abe Lincoln guy, and he made How his living being Abe Lincoln, which is, you know, having Abe Lincoln in a the theater, oh, this is a little scary. Uh, yeah, and the guy looked like De Niro, and the, uh, the real trick is finding the contestants, you know, yeah. you, you run ads for people, you like to be a contestant. And the fun thing is, uh, we get contestants from all over the United States, you know. Most of the game shows in L.A., pool from contestants within a 30 mile range of the studio because everybody's an out of work actor and they want to earn money so they go on game shows and pretend that they're a wick trimmer or some other <laughs> job you know whereas we get we've gotten people from Nigeria from the Congo from the Middle East from Louisiana from Maine from all over the, all over the world and it really it really makes it a lot of fun because they walk out and they're all oh, is Brad Pitt here? No, Brad Pitt's not going to be here tonight. No, it's just Kevin and I here. Yeah. Well, you had another contestant who was like one of the tallest women in the world. That's right. Yeah, she was. She I, stood out. She she was. Head one and of shoulders the above the rest of that. that that's correct. Head and shoulders. Above, she was above the rest of the world. And we had the world's strongest woman on. That was another interesting character. Uh, my favorite of the geniuses. You know, we had this one guy. He's on a member of Mensa. You know. And uh, so he must be very small. Oh, yes, yes. He says, my friends are always amazed when we go out to dinner and I can compute 15% of the bill for the tax in a second. I said, okay. So I said, okay, what's 15% of 500? And he says, okay, 10% of 500 would be, I, no, well, first of all, no, that's the way I do it. Mm. And I'm not a genius. I go 10% and then I cut it in half and add right. two together. I, I thought you would have the answer before I even finished asking the question. It just, it just made me laugh. It just made me laugh. It's like a, Let's talk about comedy in general. And, and, all right. And for you, uh, when you come home, do you tailor your act to a Boston-type audience? Well, not that really, because like I haven't lived here in a long time, so there's not no. a lot of points of reference that don't really apply anymore. Uh, and plus, we live in a world now where everybody, the idea of... You go to the Midwest and some hazy with a piece of straw in his teeth and bib overalls. Everybody's got a computer. Everybody has access to the same information. 
So you just, when you find jokes that work, you put them all together and you, you do a show. That's not to say if you get a riff going with somebody in the audience, you, you can't make a local reference, but I don't really have 20 minutes on the new power plant or whatever it might right. be. You know? <laughs> Let's go back to your start here in comedy in mm -hmm. Boston. And what were some of the places you played and who were some of the people maybe that you worked with? Well, when I started, there were no comedy clubs. I used to work the Hillbilly Ranch. That was in the combat zone. Okay. The Playboy Club. Uh, mostly strip clubs is what you did because you'd be, you'd go out and talk in between the girls, you know, hey, everybody, and then people throw things at you. You know, <laughs> uh, you know there were no comedy clubs. It, it's funny because comedy is not something that was that prevalent, you know. I never really met a whole lot of comedians when I started. I used to go to the Improv in New York, which was the comedy club, and there weren't enough comedians. So by the way, I paid two singers and you, because since there weren't enough people wanting to try out to be comedians, they put Broadway singers on in between. Mm -hmm. And then there was a, that big comedy boom in the 80s, and everything kind of went crazy, you know, with the HBO comedy specials sure. and all of that. But when I started, it was a, a different world. I was going to say, I can remember seeing, like, Play the Ian Sands, Bobcat Goldthwait back in the day. Right, 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 Lenny yeah. Clark, those guys were all been out. Yeah, yeah, I just talking to Lenny's brother a few minutes ago. Yeah. He, yeah. I gave a young comedian a ride, in, and uh, Mike Clark picked him up, so we had a nice reunion. Um, if, we, if you would, I just want to ask you a little bit about sure. this. Sure. At work where I am, I'm kind of getting to be the, uh, one of the elder statesmen, and I'm always told that is such a dad joke. First of all, you got a good dad joke that I can get away with, or how do I handle that? Oh, a dad, you want a dad joke. <laughs> all right, he, he, this would be a, a real dad joke. What kind of fish has two knees? I don't know. Toonie fish. <laughs> You're very good. That's very bad. good. I'll have to remember that. How much a pirate earring? <laughs> um, I just want to... How much a pirate earring? Oh, how much a pirate earrings? A buccaneer. <laughs> I mean, it, it, that, I, these are stupid. These, these are not jokes I do. He asked. <laughs> I he, need to. He asked for this. I, has to, I, I, have I didn't to volunteer this. these. I have three kids. They're all adults now, yeah. and so I, you know, dad yeah. humor comes out easily. Um, when you're looking at the landscape now for late night television, um, and you were such a star in there, and and do you think the show has changed when you look at late night? First of all, do you, do you watch late night television? Well, the thing that's different is when Letterman and I and a few of the other guys are on, it was the only thing on late night. Now you have all these streaming services. You right. can watch the three Godfather trilogies without commercials all at once if you right. want. You can watch Lord of the Rings. You can, you can watch any sporting event in history is on tape and you can rewatch it. So consequently, that's one reason. The other is, there is a, uh, they pass this law after like 11.30 at night, you can add more commercials to a show. So most late night shows from 12 to 12.09 is just like a nine minute commercial. Mm -hmm. So, it, and if you're not used to, you know, kids grow up with streaming, they don't really watch commercials anymore. So the idea of watching regular television with commercials, I think that model has got to change a bit. Um, plus now, the thing is a bit different now. When I did it, you kind of made fun of both sides equally. And every, now you have to pick a side. People want to know how, where you stand on every issue. Right. And if they don't agree with you, now they hate you. You know, they can, that's always my favorite letter. I was a big fan until you told this one joke. Now I hate you. I can't do anything about that. I'm sorry. You know. But I would think social media as well and everything else, the prevalence of that now. Yeah, plus the idea in the old days, it was appointment television. If you right. wanted to hear the monologue, well, you had to be there at 11.30, or maybe you taped it. Now, at any point during the day, you can call it up and watch it, so you don't have to sit through a boring guest or something else. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 it is. It's a whole different world. You've done a lot. You're, you're in television. You're on a show with uh, Tim Allen. But uh, I watch your garage, Jay's Garage, which I'm a big fan of. Well, thanks. The, the amount of cars you own and motorcycles, when did you get that, or is that something you just had all your life? I know I've watched it, and you kind of talked about that. I've seen you with Elon Musk. I've seen you drive, right, drive right. the bullet car. I've right, seen you right. drive an Aston yeah, Martin yeah. from Roger Moore and Jay right. Fawn. Well, I, I mean, I, I grew up in an era, anything that rolls explodes and makes noise, which was, you know, I grew up in the 60s when 
cars were like part of music and popular culture. Guys who knew nothing about cars pretended to know. Nice mill. <laughs> you know what they were talking about. You know, so it, it's it's a bit different. Um, I, I I like it because I work it. You know. I always say the, the hardest hell is when the head and the hands work together, you know. So in the daytime you work on cars, you fix stuff, and then at night you wash your hands, you go out and you tell jokes, you go, this is a much easier way to make money. <laughs> oh, this is so much better. It gives you appreciation of it, you know. Now, I'll tell you, it's interesting to watch and, and, and the different facets of your career. Television, you know, people think Tonight Show first, but there's so many other parts to Jay Leno. Well, I was always a stand-up comedian who was lucky enough to get a TV show. But I never quit stand-up because stand-up, you can like golf, you can play it till you're 80. TV, it's a. I was lucky. My show lasted 22 years. Some shows just last 13 weeks. Some last last a year and a half, and then you're out on the street again, you know. But if you have quote an act, yeah. you have a trade. You can get up and do it anywhere, you know. Like to this, I come by myself. You go here, you walk out in the theater. Yeah, right. Write joke, tell joke, get check. Very simple. <laughs> if someone were to ask you, mm -hmm. hey, we're thinking about putting together a late night show, would you be a host? No, because I did it already. And it's like, you know, look, when you're 40 and you're talking to the 26 year old soup model, it's sexy. When you're 72, you're the <laughs> creepy old guy. You know? I mean, I realized, I, you know, it, it came to me one day, I said, my next guest has sold more albums than Elvis and the Beatles combined. Please welcome, who is this? I've never heard of this guy. I've never heard of the song. How did he sell all these? You know, I mean, that's, at some point you realize you, 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 you outgrow it. But no, I, I wouldn't want to do a talk show, a TV show. Again. It's just different. You, you, you can't, everything is so serious now. Yeah. What's the number one you think of? What comes to mind when you think of going back home? Uh, going back home? Coming back here to, to the well, area. Well, you know, I, I grew up in this area, and it's a great place to be from. Because I, I always say that, you know, back here I was the laziest person anybody knew. And I went to L.A. and suddenly I'm the hardest working person everybody knew. Uh, here there's that wonderful New England suspicion, you know. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I mean, I'll, I, I got a New England compliment the other day. I'm going to try and phrase this in a way that is, uh, it, 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 I won't use the obscenity. But this guy comes up and he goes, hey, Jay Leno, right? Yeah, my friend met you in California. He said you're not an a-hole. I said, oh, well, thank you, sir. And then he goes, no, really? He said you weren't. I said, well, thank you very much. And I realized, that's as good a compliment as you're going to get. You know, people around here, yeah, uh-huh, mm -hmm. they size you up, and, and that's as good as you're going to get, so just accept that. And it always, always makes me laugh, you know. Just, just coming from that feisty New England. I, I can remember when uh, people in Massachusetts were fighting Dukakis on the seatbelt law. Mm -hmm. And they were selling T-shirts that had a fake seatbelt on it. So if a cop saw you in the T-shirt, oh, it looked like you had a <laughs> belt on it. You go, really? You're going to all that trouble? Just to... But, I mean, that, it's just so... So New Englandy, you know, it just it just makes me laugh. I mean, Bill Burr and all the Lenny Clark, all these guys. To me, the funniest comedians all come from Boston because there's an uh, there's an agitation, you know. There's a New England like, uh, like people say, hey, you got a gardener out there in California? Do your own gardener. <laughs> no, I do my own gardener. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got a trainer? No, no, I don't have a trainer. No, you you exercise yourself. You don't get a trainer? No, I don't have a trainer. You know, they ask you these kind of questions. It just, it just makes me laugh. It's really, this is really a funny place to be from because it's just, just a lot of funny things happen around here. It just makes me laugh. So, you know, I, I grew up here. And, you know, you're really pretty good. Huh? <laughs> you're really pretty good. No, but you know what I mean. But you, you, know, <laughs> you know that New England? Oh, yes. That New England? Well, what happens to us is they'll come up and say, you know, I anchor the news at night. Yeah. My favorite meteorologist. <laughs> so it comes right back. It, full circle. Yeah, there you go. There like, you go. wonder if they're watching it all. There you go. Exactly. We appreciate it. Well, it's thank great you very to meet much. you. And good luck with the show. Good we'll to be, be watching. back home. Thanks. Have a good show tonight. Awesome. Thanks. Appreciate it. You mind taking a picture real quick? No, of course not. I'd love to. Sorry, I was a little late. Not a problem. Yeah.